I'll never forget the screams. The 1946 Canfield Hotel Fire. A Telegraph Herald documentary. It started fast and spread rapidly. One of Iowa's deadliest hotel fires killed 19 people and injured scores more in Dubuque 75 years ago this month. The Canfield Hotel fire shocked the area residents with its suddenness and ferocity. Emergency workers labored for days after the flames were put out, searching for bodies in the ruins. The horrific sights and sounds of June 9, 1946 were vivid for the late Gloria Schilling, who shared her recollections in 2006. Her aunt and uncle, Grace and Bill Canfield, managed the hotel. Bill's parents, Emma and William G. Canfield Sr., owned the 55-year-old building, which they had purchased in the 1920s. The elder couple lived in one of the hotel's apartments. Nearly 150 people were staying in the Canfield Hotel's 200 rooms that day in 1946. Some who stopped for a night. Some who lived in permanent apartments. At about midnight, a fire broke out in a closet in the back of the Red Lounge on the hotel's first floor. Flames spread quickly to the upper floors. In less than 20 minutes, the entire structure was ablaze. A Telegraph Herald reporter observed that, quote, many of the windows in the annex framed guests, pleading, begging, and screaming. Gloria recalled the horror, quote, such screams, you could hear the screams blocks away, she said. People were hanging out the window. Firemen were running everywhere. Captain Harold Cosgrove of the Dubuque Fire Department told a reporter at the time that, quote, If I live to be 100, I'll never forget the screams of people standing at windows when I arrived. Nearly 60 firefighters from across the city battled the blaze. As luck would have it, the fire department had purchased a large safety net just three months before the fire. It was rushed into place underneath the windows to catch people as they jumped to escape the flames. The net caught 27 people. However, a number of those who jumped into the net were injured. One honeymooning couple broke their backs. Several people broke hips or legs. One woman hit her head on the net's metal rim and died. And at least one woman missed the net, crashing to her death on the pavement. The fire spread so quickly, it was horrible, said Gloria, who stood vigil through the night with hundreds of others. She remembered realizing that people had died when she first saw firemen carrying out the first body bags. One was especially poignant. It held a little girl. Her blue hair bow was visible under the bag. Bill Canfield was injured when he tried to rescue his parents, burning his hands badly as he tried unsuccessfully to get into their apartment. The fire claimed both elder Canfields, although Emma had been alive when firemen rescued her. She had tried to save her invalid husband by pouring water over him in a bathtub. In a 2006 interview, the late John McCoy remembered how his firefighter father fought the blaze. Joseph McCoy's company was called to the scene after downtown crews got there. Their job was to shoot water on the hotel's east side, where there was a fire escape. John recalled that, quote, For the next week, Dad's crew worked to find bodies and get them out. They went room to room and searched through the rubble. The day after the fire, 14-year-old John and his mother Frances went down to the site standing across the street from the charred remains of the building with a large crowd of onlookers. He remembers that, quote, it was pretty well gutted and the air smelled like smoke. There were sheets hanging out of windows and firemen going up and down ladders. The fire consumed the older section of the Canfield, leaving the fireproof concrete annex less damaged. The section was rebuilt and restored. 
Today, Canfield remains in business, offering 60 rooms. <laughs>